Let's talk about a world in which everything is changing around us at furious pace. You're all hearing the phrase business model disruption. You all know that we live in a world in which organizations like Uber are coming along and changing entire industries. You know you work in an industry which is being subjected to very rapid change. And I want to take you on a tour of the future, and I'm probably going to terrify you with the speed and the scope of the change that is unfolding. And as I do so, ask yourself this message. How are you going to take these trends? Are you going to see these trends and see a threat? Or are you going to think like, like Chris suggested and think about opportunity? How are you going to turn the impossible into the possible? Let's think about what is happening in our world today. We are at a period of time in which there are multiple trends coming together. Artificial intelligence, augmented reality, sophisticated radar, self-driving cars. We have never lived in a period of time in which we have seen so many technologies come together all at once, which would help us to do the impossible. And there are people taking advantage of that. We have never lived in a period of time in which every single company, every single industry is becoming a software company. Think about what's happening with the emergence of GPS technology in cars, real-time monitoring of insurance activities, and we can underwrite policies in real-time based upon real-time behavior. What happens here is the speed of change in insurance in every single industry is shifting from that industry to the speed of Silicon Valley, to the speed of technology companies, to the speed of companies like Apple and PayPal and Facebook, all of whom innovate extremely quickly. We're in a world in which increasingly the small can beat big. You think about what is happening in the credit card industry where a little company called Square comes along with a little device that we can plug into our iPhone and suddenly can provide credit card service capability to organizations worldwide. And all of a sudden, Visa, MasterCard, and American Express are caught extremely flat-footed by a small startup that can fundamentally change their industry. We are in a world in which Moore's Law is increasingly defining the innovation in entire industries. You know, if you've seen one of these self-driving cars, and Uber will be appearing with their self-driving cars, we saw one in Pittsburgh a number of weeks ago, a little spinning top, it's called LiDAR, specialized form of radar, which helps the car to sense activities around it. The cost of LiDAR is collapsing. What was $75,000 just a couple of years ago is down to $250 or less to $90, $5 just a few years out. What we are witnessing is that cost collapse that occurred with computer technology that led to a world in which we essentially carry around a supercomputer in our pocket. We are in a world in which disruption is occurring everywhere. I am spending so much time with so many industries who are trying to figure out what do we do in a world in which suddenly the rules no longer apply, in which suddenly the industry that I knew and loved is being subjected to dramatic change. I'm with a company in New York in a couple of weeks called Henry Schein. Henry Schein is in the business of selling products to veterinarians, to doctors, and to dentists. Healthy business, comfortable business, but all of a sudden, Amazon has decided that they can sell products to dentists, doctors, and veterinarians. And all of a sudden, the middleman in the middle is subjected with a future in which their role is being questioned and challenged and disrupted. Disruption is everywhere. We're in a world in which science is absolutely exponentiating. Self-driving cars, electric vehicles, the cost of lithium-ion batteries is collapsing at a furious pace. There are solutions on the horizon to a world in which we have been so carbon-dependent. We're in a world in which attention spans are absolutely collapsing. Speaking at an uh, auto insurance conference a couple of weeks ago out in uh, Phoenix, I made the observation when somebody is buying a car, they're going on to the automotive dealer lot and they're looking at their phone, looking to underwrite the purchase of their vehicle and seek a loan. They expect to be able to do it in about 30 seconds. And then they're going to seek an insurance policy through their mobile device and they expect to be able to do it in about 30 seconds. I was with Godiva Chocolates in Ghent, Belgium a couple of weeks ago talking about changes in the world of retail. It is said in the retail world that goldfish today have a longer attention span than your typical human because we are spending so much time in front of our mobile devices. When we go in a store, we are scanning some 12 feet of shelf space per second. Our attention spans are disappearing because of technology. 
We're in a world in which artificial intelligence is, is accelerating expectations for interaction. I was speaking at a credit union conference just last week and talking about the fact we already have a credit union in the U.S. who has put an Amazon Echo technology in place by which you can talk to your Amazon Echo home speaker. And you saw that Apple announced their equivalent yesterday and you can do your financial transactions simply by talking to an AI assistant. We were ta weren't talking about this five years ago. Nobody saw this coming, a world of instant interaction. We are in a world in which real-time data is providing real-time risk insight. Think about what happens with the world of the Internet of Things when we put all of these sensors in our home and we can suddenly undertake risk assessments and challenge our actuarial assess assumptions as to what we are doing in risk because we now have real-time insight and can underwrite policies in real time. Imagine a world of insurance that is based upon the concept of using actuaries who look back in time in order to make underwriting decisions. And now imagine a world in which we've got remote blood pressure monitoring and other medical devices based on bioconnectivity, and we can underwrite insurance policies based on real time with the reality of the medical tricorder increasingly becoming a part of our life. A world in which the 23rd century is suddenly invading the world of insurance. Imagine a world in which gamers, the young population, increasingly coming into our workplace, increasingly becoming a part of our workforce, increasingly becoming the individuals who are, we are trying to underwrite policies to. You know, World of Warcraft, League of Legends, they held a live gaming challenge in a stadium in Los Angeles. 43 million kids around the world tuned in. And these are the individuals who are looking for insurance policies that are based on performance. We want to move up a level. We want to be rewarded instantly for good behavior. They are bringing the philosophy of gaming interaction into the world of insurance. Imagine a world in which distributed technologies are completely redefining industries. You know, think about what is happening in the world of energy. I've got a little bit of backyard solar, you've got a little bit of backyard wind. Hey, we shared music back in the Napster days. Why don't we share our energy and create our own little microgrid and increasingly opt out of the traditional energy grid? Distributed technologies which are changing entire industries. We live in a world in which there are big and bold thinkers who are taking advantage of these trends to fundamentally change everything around us. Genomic medicine changes everything. Increasingly, the healthcare system is transitioning to one in which rather than fixing people after they're sick, we know what they're going to become sick with based upon their genetic profile, and we can re-architect the delivery of healthcare resources based upon that knowledge. I had my 23andMe mapping done, and before I read it, it double confirmed, do you really want to know if you are at risk, if you carry the gene for Alzheimer's and cystic? And I answered yes, and thankfully I'm not. But imagine a world in which everything changes, in which we can better understand the policies that we are underwriting. And yes, with this world come deep ethical privacy and other issues and fascinating information. I discovered through the 23andMe testing that I carry the gene which is common to most high-speed sprinters. Look at me! And I was thrilled to hear David's observation that we're all Africans because every time I was watching the Olympics and Usain Bolt was coming on TV, I was sort of there, hi, cuz, <laughs> driving my family crazy. But think about a world in which big, bold thinking dominates our agenda. And think about a world in which everything changes because of the next generation. My sons are 22 and 24. They have never known a world without the Internet. But look at this crowd. And let's ask a little question here in a show of hands. How many of you, the very first computer course you ever took involved learning COBOL, BASIC, or FORTRAN? This is how you identify the baby boomers in the room. We are the only generation in the history of mankind who ever met the punch card. <laughs> Do not fold, spindle, or mutilate. We still don't know what spindle means. <laughs> Nobody ever explained that to us. And do you know what happened to us baby boomers? We were in the workplace when technology arrived, and it wasn't pretty, it wasn't friendly, it wasn't fun, it wasn't easy to use. And so when it comes to all this fast-paced change, 
we feel a little battered and bruised. We have change management workshops to help us deal with change. The attitude that some of us adopt towards fast-paced trends in the future is found in an observation by Ogden Nash. Progress is great, but it's gone on way too long. <laughs> make it stop, make it slow down, make it go away. I don't want to have to deal with all this fast-paced change. But that's not going to happen. And one of the reasons for that is because the next generation is different. Here's a little cartoon that puts in perspective the unique period of time in which we find ourselves today. See, Dad? What you've got to do is you've got to, you know, load the disk. Then you're going to transfer the file to here. And then you are going to double click to open. So what is happening in this scenario is we have a child walking his father through step by step how to install a piece of software on the family home computer. And the last frame really puts in perspective the unique period of time in which we find ourselves today. See, Dad, that's how you install an internet porn filter. <laughs> There's something weird about this. And Dad's going to leave the room. The kid's just going to uninstall the filter. The thing is, because of who we are, because of the period of time in which we grew up, because of the fact we are the only generation in the history of mankind who will ever have used MS-DOS, we don't necessarily like change. We struggle with change. We like to do this week what we did the week before. And we all know that quote by Einstein. Einstein. If you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, expect a different result each time. Well, that's how we can define insanity. We cling to routine. We are creatures of habit. There's nothing wrong with that because there is no other generation in the history of mankind who will ever go through what we went through with technology. My great-grandparents never had to deal with this stuff. My sons have never known a world without the internet. They've never known a world for the last 15 years in which they haven't had a mobile device at their hands by which they can access the whole of human knowledge. Well, you know, we are so unique in who we are and what we do. And the thing is, they are different when it comes to change. They thrive in innovation. They thrive in ideas. They thrive in challenges. They, they've never been held back by the barriers that come with fast-paced change because fast-paced change has been a part of their life from day one. Think about the forests that they are. One out of two people in the world today is under the age of 25. We know they're wired. We know they're collaborative. We know they're change-oriented. And we know that they are coming into industries and saying, we can do it fundamentally different. We are going to change things up. They are going to accelerate things even faster. And think about how unique they are. Think about how unique this generation is. They don't have a job for life. They freelance. They know they are coming into an economy in which the chance of a job for life is a quaint concept from the olden days. Their banking is mobile. Have you ever met anybody 20 years old who knows how to reconcile a bank account, who even knows what a bank reconciliation is? They barely even use cash. We are in the post-cashless society. They don't think long-term, 26 and 25-year mortgages. That's an entirely foreign concept. They don't stay at hotels. They use Airbnb. They don't use taxis. They Uber. They might not have a group benefit plan because they might not be part of a group. It is estimated that large numbers of this population might not even buy a car because they will be a part of the sharing economy. How are we going to sell insurance policies to individuals who might not fundamentally need insurance? What do we do in a world in which so much change is coming at us? We live in a world in which change is everywhere. Every morning I get up and I take a little stage photo from one of the stages I've had the opportunity to speak on around the world. And I think to my mind, what can my message be to the world today? And I wrote this one a number of weeks ago. Companies that do not yet exist will build products that aren't yet conceived based on ideas that do not yet exist using materials that we don't even yet know what they are and using manufacturing methodologies which perhaps might be pure science fiction.